A very good evening to you wherever you are. It is the 30th day of uh, June, the year 2017, and it's the last day of the month, and it's only 38 days remaining before we go to the polls. Uh, this is a Frontline 2017, a program that uh, brings you various aspirants as we talk about the plans they have uh, for the residents uh, of uh, the various uh, uh, various uh, uh, counties or regions that they are coming from. Our focus today is uh, on Busia County. We want to talk about uh, those aspiring to be the county uh, woman representative. And uh, I see with us this evening is none other than the incumbent, that is uh, Florence Mutua. She is uh, seeking to be re-elected on ODM okay. party ticket. Florence, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, in studio with us Isabella Masinde. She is uh, vying for that position on a uh, Jubilee party ticket. In other words, she wants to unseat Florence Mutua. Uh, Isabella, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, just to let you know that we're coming to you live on uh, Y254 on KBC Channel 1 and uh, on KBC Radio Taifa. My name is Martin Mwanja and uh, standing by the other side of the studio is uh, Isaac Lemoka. Isaac, uh, wakitaka kuzungumza nasi, awasikiliza juwetu na watazama juwetu uh, kupitia upande ule mungine wafanya nini. Isaac Lemoka. Zangu Martin Mwanja shukrani tena sana nimepokea kwa njelo safi kabisa kama ulivyosema tunakujia moja kwa moja uh, kutoka Radio Taifa Sauti ya Mkenya Mubashara pia ndani ya KBC Channel 1 na leo hii ikiwa ni siku ya mwisho kabisa katika mwezi huu wa sita tunafarijika na ni fahari yetu kujumuika na viongozi kutoka Kaka County ya Busia alivyokujuza mwanangu um, Martin Mwanja ni kwamba Florence Mutua ambaye anawania kiti cha mwakilishi wa wanawake katika kaunti hiyo uh, kwa chama ya ODM ambaye yeye basi ndio mwakilishi wa sasa anayewakilisha uh, wakilisha kaunti hiyo Isabella Masinde kutoka Jubilee pia anajaribu sana kuona kwamba anaweza kuuza sera zake na pia kuweza kumondoa Florence Mutua katika um, uwakilishi wa wanawake katika kaunti hiyo na pia Pauline Morin Nangila na, 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 Nagila wa Fort Kenya ambaye hayuko nasi studioni lakini ametuahidi kwamba tutaweza kumpigia simu na kuweza kujua ni kwa ni anataka kuwa uh, mwakilishi wa wanawake katika eneo hilo uh, la Busia hivyo basi weka miadi nasi tutakuwa tunazungumza na Pauline Morin Nangila wa Ford Kenya alafu kuna wengine ambao pia wangependa sana kuweza kuchukua wadhifa huo wa Florence Mutua ni akina Grace Imo hali kadhalika Susan Mangeni wewe pia mtazamaji na msikilizaji wa Radio Taifa kama upo katika kaunti ya Busia ndio muda wako huu unaweza kuzungumza uh, na sisi kupitia nambari za simu sufuri saba sufuri sufuri moja saba sita sita tisa tisa au pia sufuri saba tatu mbili saba ne tano moja 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 na nambari zetu za SMS ni two two one six two yani mbili mbili moja sita mbili mita na yake jamii Facebook na Twitter at KBC Channel One at I Lemoka at Marto Bahati na vile vile hashtag yetu kwenye mita na wao Twitter ni hashtag the front line sawa sawa alafu tutakuwa tunazungumza mengi sana maana kuna changamoto kuna masala mengi sana ambayo yanahusiana na na, mas, uh, na, na na wakazi wa wa, wa, wa busia moja wapo tutazungumzia kuhusiana na uh, yale ambayo tumeweza kupokea wakati huu ni kuhusiana na viongozi ama walimu wakuu katika baadhi ya shule za busia hususan katika eneo ama shule la Bukati Primary School ambapo pesa zinaitishwa za laptops tutaweza kuna ni jinsi gani ambavyo viongozi ambao wako nasi leo hii ndani ya studio wataweza kurekebisha masala kama hayo masala ya biashara uh, masala ya 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 birth rate yani uh, watu wanazaliwa sana huko Busia eh, na hivi hivi <laughs> majuzi uh, okay tutaweza kuona yapi ambayo yanaweza kujiri na boot la polytechnic pia inakwenda chini na Boot la Polytechnic imekuwa ni kitovu kikubwa sana uh, cha masomo uh, katika eneo hilo la Busia. Wewe basi jumuika nasi kwenye mitandao ya Facebook na Twitter at KBC Channel 1 at I Lemoka at Marto Bahati na vile vile at KBC Radio Taifa hashtag kama ni kukuduza ni the frontline number zetu za simu kwa mara nyingine tena kwa mara nyingine tena kabla ya kurejea kwake um, Martin Mwanje ni 0700106766 tisa tisa au sufuri saba tatu mbili saba nne uh, tano moja 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 SMS line zetu live live ndani ya studio ni mbili mbili moja sita mbili anza kufanya hivyo sasa hivi alafu tazungumza moja kwa moja uh, na uheshimiwa ambao wako 
ndani ya studio kwako Martin Mwanje Asante sana asante sana Isaac Lemoka kama ulivyosikiliza hapo msikilizaji wetu wa KBC Radio Taifa pamoja na runinga ya KBC Channel 1 piga simu tutumie jumbe wauleze maswali Isabela Masinde anayegombea kiti cha mwakilisho wanawake katika kaunti ya Busia kwa chama cha Jubilee na vile vile amgombea eh, mwakilisho wanawake eh, kwa wakati huu Florence Mtua anapigania kuhifadhi uh, kiti hicho kwa chama cha ODM na sasa wacha tuongoe nanga sasa uh, Florence a total of 10 contestants in Busia County I'm um, seeking to unseat you let me say 9 because you are the 10th mm -hmm. that should be an indictment that perhaps you have not performed for the last 4 years uh, first and foremost let me thank KBC for giving us this opportunity mm -hmm. to come and talk about uh, women representation in Busia County and um, I also want to thank the women who have come out to vie on the various seats, uh, whether it is women representative or MCA, because uh, it, it takes a lot of courage for mm -hmm. somebody to just come out and vie. Mm -hmm. So it is a plus. Uh, secondly, um, it is unfortunate that most of the women are just focusing on the seat for women representative. So that is not uh, to show that I have not been able to do what I'm supposed to do as a women representative. The strong women that are um, going to lose, because some will lose, I mean the nine will lose. If they lose, I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to win, I'm saying if the nine lose, where will they be? Because that will be five years eh, in, the, in the dark. But if they had, we, I've been talking to women in various forums that we need to spread out. Mm -hmm. Because we only have two MCAs who came in in, uh, in Busia County. If we had more women vying, even from uh, governor, senator, uh, women rep, MP, and all these uh, other seats, I'm sure we'll be having uh, maybe lesser women on the, the MPs, M, uh, the women representative seat. But I believe uh, women come ra rush to the women representative seat because they think uh, that being a female uh, gender, you will be easier to tackle. But I can assure them I'm not easy to tackle either. You're yeah, not easy to tackle, yes. Isabella. That's uh, a very strong <laughs> statement that comes to you, yes. to you. Yeah. But, uh, Florence raises a very fundamental issue that yes. there's this obsession that I want to be women rep because I'm a woman and these are constitutional uh, seats as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do we so far understand or do you as you go to this particular election, do you understand the role of uh, a woman representative? Because Florence will tell you that several they have been referred to as uh, flower girls. Well, I think that notion of flower girl has been uh, perpetrated mainly by our male counterparts who don't want to appreciate women in leadership. Uh, but this position is a position that brings people very close to the communities that we live with. It's uh, the position that actually links uh, policy with practice. Because if you look at the work of uh, an MP, uh, a normal member of parliament for a constituency, mm -hmm. they actually just focus on what I would call hardware, you know, like construction of schools, uh, making of roads. But where the woman rep position is concerned, you are actually working to empower people. Actually, you work with people the way you would work uh, if you are in um, a, a civil society organization, you know, bringing people together, uh, social inclusion, all those issues come in. But the, the, the argument that has been there, and, and perhaps from Florence's perspective, that has been uh, the argument that, and, and there are those who've called for the scrapping of this position altogether. Mm -hmm. And, and the, 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 if you look at Article 97 um, of the Constitution, it talks about creating that position of women, uh, woman representative, but it's not um, expressed on what mm -hmm. is the role of uh, uh, women representatives, mm -hmm. and perhaps the notion that the, the, the seat ought to be scrapped. What exactly is the role of uh, a woman representative? Uh, first, let me say that uh, a woman, uh, the, it, uh, the speaker said uh, in the 11th parliament that actually we should uh, drop the name women representative and call it a county MP. You know why he said that? Because we are members of parliament, just like the constituency MPs. We are members of parliament. It is only that the county MP was slotted for a female gender. Mm -hmm. You are an MP, but of the female gender. So our roles are three. We represent, we oversight, and legislate, just like the, the constituency MPs. But we have an added um, task from the communities. Because when you are, you're given an elective seat, people always expect something from you. Apart, I mean, it's not like a nominated position. People do not focus so much on nominated people. Mm -hmm. But if people elect you on a ballot, they expect something else from you. 
And our people do not understand that issue of oversight, at least for now. What they need is actual visible projects on the ground. Now is when people are beginning to understand the issues of oversight. That is now when they are beginning to understand that when uh, Florence is in Bunge, she's going to legislate about policies that affect the affirmative action. But that's coming slowly. People at the ground need the basics. They need water. They need food. They need hunger. They need uh, shelter. Mm -hmm. So when they elected us as women representatives, we realized we had those three um, positions as members of parliament. And then we quickly realized we have no funding. So we quickly had to sit down and think how we, we were supposed to continue and make this seat relevant. Now I can assure you the Senate seat, nobody really wants that seat anymore. In Busia County, you can see how many people wanted even that seat. Because they, the senators never fought to get their own funding to be able to do the third, the fourth job that is in quotes for the community. So as we manage to fight for our funding, and as we continue, I will, I will be able to articulate the things that we have been able to achieve with that funding. Mm -hmm. But for now, women representation is like, uh, I mean, the county MP seat is just like any other uh, normal uh, MP seat. When you talk about funding, uh, Isabella, maybe if I can get your thoughts on this, mm. because the other day, and, and we know that the, the attempts to have CDF um, taken back to counties, and, and the, the, there's the argument that the counties are now the ones so much uh, into uh, doing a lot of development. She talks of the role of a uh, woman representative being legislative, mm -hmm. talk about representation and talk about oversight. Mm -hmm. The question is, do you need this funding? Yes, of course. I mean, just like uh, she has said, if you have been elected by people, they expect delivery. Mm. How will you deliver if you don't have funding? Mm. You must have some funds so that you can actually engage the women, even if it's just a meeting mm -hmm. that you, you want to hold with the women. Where will you hold this meeting? They expect at least the refreshments. They expect transport to go back home. Now, if you don't have that uh, kitty, how are you going to do it? And, uh, you know, the women and youth, it's not just about women. This seat is not uh, for women alone. It covers the, the entire community because, of course, when you are helping women, then you are helping the entire community. And they are involved in various things. They, they have small businesses. They want to do farming. They want... How would you support them? At least some input so that... They, they are able to produce what they can sell on the market and also have enough for their homes. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about the, the, especially the question of projects. Mm -hmm. But Florence, if I get you right, we, we, we talk and, and, and that seems to be a consensus that uh, women have to do oversight. Mm -hmm. And are, are we talking about county projects, for example, oversighting them? That's MPs some of your oversight the national and MPs oversight the national projects. But the women representatives? Even us, we are MPs, we oversight the national projects. Uh, let's go to, to, let me cite the example of a project like Sigiri, for example. Yes. The, the, there are those who argue that, number one, we're talking about 1.2 billion shillings, yes. that that money may not be a true reflection of that project. Yes. And number two, that the bridge collapsed and Isabella and, and Florence were nowhere to try and raise the fundamental issues that are now emerging regarding that bridge in Busia County. Um, what I can say about the Sigiri bridge is this. And I was among the first leaders actually to comment. If you read the star uh, of, uh, I think, two days ago, we went there and we realized uh, there was a big problem. I'm not a, a, an engineer, but according to the way the, pro the, 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 the bridge was, you could see maybe there were some construction problems. I cannot say, because we need an, an investigation done. At what point did you realize there were problems? That's the question. When it fell down, because when it was being constructed, we thought everything was being done properly. But when it, it collapsed, we had to go and uh, find out what, wh how, how, what happened. And if anybody, the first thing was to find out if there were people injured. The people who were injured were, of course, taken to hospital. But now what we need the government to do is to come and help us uh, investigate. Because already there is nothing there, I mean, to, 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 to uh, it's the government now that has to investigate the Sigiri Bridge. And tell us where the 1.2 billion went. Apparently... Uh, we also need to understand the project cycle of that, uh, the bridge because we need to know how, when it was supposed to start and when it was supposed to end and what happened in between and if the contractor got the necessary materials to do the work. So that is now where the investigation is going to, to give us the highlight on if the project was uh, following the project cycle. But the question will be, and, and perhaps Isabella, and, and the, the, the questions people are raising are, 
should, should it not have been prudent that once the construction began, because we have what we call um, the, the initial evaluation, mid-term and end-term and those kind of things, that these are issues that you should have raised prior to the collapse because you are always to oversight, as opposed to waiting until it collapses. Well, now, you know, I think a lot of attention has been shifted to buildings, you know, where people live and buildings like offices, because we've had a lot of them collapsing. So the code of... Uh, uh, the, uh, those codes they use in the construction industry should actually be applied even when we are doing something like uh, a bridge. Maybe too much attention was not paid to that because they assumed that the people who were working on this project uh, were experts and they knew what they were doing. But I think it's the responsibility of the ministry concerned. If it's Ministry of Works and Roads, somebody, w we need to know who was attached from government to ensure that they are following all the, 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 the set standards mm -hmm. for construction of bridges. And we know there are many more that are going to come up, like the Likoni one that is going to be at the Mtongwe. Mm -hmm. So we have to be sure that we are not going to collapse into the ocean when we are very comfortable, you know, crossing. <laughs> <laughs> it will be very sad. So I think the, the ministry concerned should actually not just run at this time to go and start evaluation. They should provide a report of what happened before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Florence, you have been a uh, Busia County Human Representative uh, for the last four and a half years or so. Mm -hmm. um, can you perhaps just single out some specifics that this is what I did for the last four and a half years? that warrant my re-election, that you can go and tell the, uh, the, the people of Busia that this is why I'm going for this seat once again? That's a very good question. One, um, and I'm happy Isabella is here, and uh, maybe the other women representatives are watching. It's very important to go back in history and understand the challenges we've had as the pioneer women representatives, because we have had challenges, serious ones. Maybe they wouldn't know, but uh, we know the 47 who came to parliament the first time. And as I said, the first challenge was to come into an office that has no money. I have been working using my salary and allowances until 2016, uh, the second February. That is when now at least I started saying, uh, let me not use my salary because now we have the affirmative fund. That is when the affirmative fund started being used in 2016, March. How much is it? it, it the first, we, I'll talk about it. Let me, let me just go with my, my thought first. <laughs> So the first thing I can say that I ever did, as, and the 47 women representatives, the pioneer ones, is to fight for this seat to get funding. It was very difficult. Those women have suffered, and it is unfortunate even some of them have not been given a chance even to be nominated into, to give it a try on 8th of August, mm -hmm. because they really gave it their best. It was very, very tough for mm -hmm. all of us. So the first thing I must say is we fought for the funding, for the seat at least to have funding. It was not easy because we even used to stay in the office of, of the uh, Mr. Koe, uh, the finance minister, until very late at night. So we really, really fought for that. So I must say uh, salute to all the women representatives. We did a good job. We got at least some little funding, however little it is. So that is one of the things we did as women representatives. The second one, personally, I have done for Busia County. And it also goes back in history when I was campaigning in 2013. I was going around in villages, and you could see uh, small girls holding small babies. You know Busia County is one of those counties where we have a high rate of early pregnancies, very, very high rate. Because in 2016 only, we managed, we, we got, we, we, according to the data we have, 10,000 girls dropped out of school because of pregnancies, not because of poverty or any other issue. They dropped out because of pregnancies. So for me, in fact, the thing that really was disturbing me when we, are, we realized we had no funding was to fight and ensure that these girls at least get some sort of support. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was the only first thing that was into my head. And um, uh, when now, even before the funding came in, in uh, 2016, I managed to take at least 14 of those uh, girls back to school. The data is there in the office. In fact, some of them have already finished uh, uh, college. Uh, they were in the Kenya Water Institute and all over. So I'm happy at least I started with those even before the funding came. Just hold on your thought, we'll uh -huh. be uh, 
continuing because I know you want to articulate those issues and I'll be uh, going back to Isabella. Mm -hmm. Isaac, lemoka nambuwa kwamba kuna, tunajua kwamba kuna wagombiaji kumi katika uh, wadhifa huu, katika county ya Busia, na unanyarifukua mmoja wawo, nataka kuzungumza kusiana na uh, mawazo ama maono yake kwe, alionayo kwa county ya Busia siyo. Bila shukrani sana. E, kama ulivyosema ni kweli kabisa tunaye Pauline Morin na Gila kwenye simu hapa atakuwa anazungumza mawili machache kuhusiana na nia yake ya kuweza um, kuwania wafa huu ambao anaushikilia Florence Mutua. Kama unanisikiliza mheshimiwa Pauline Morin hujambo? Ana shukrani uh, na furahi sana kuzungumza na wewe kupitia uh, njia ya simu. Sijui kwa nini hujaweza kufika katika studio zetu leo. Nam. Alafu pia mambo ya uchukuzi kutoka uwanja wa ndege wa Kisumu. Mm. Umekuwa kidogo na matatizo na ndege yangu ikasongesha mpaka kesha asubuhi. Asante sana lakini hata hivyo tunashukuru sana kuweza kujumuika na wewe na moja kwa moja nitakuuliza ni kwa nini wewe unataka kumnatua Florence Mtua kwenye wadhifa huu wa mwakilishi wa wanawake katika kaunti ya Busia. Mhm, tunakusikiliza ungesonga kidogo kando na na, na TV ama radio yako tafadhali. Mheshimiwa. Eh, Naam. Kwa hilo swali lakini mimi au mm. jina naitwa Pauline Morin Nabila. Yes. Ni mzaliwa wa Busia County. Mhm. Na ninatoka katika sub county ya Kodalani. Mhm. Ah, uh, nimeweza kukuzwa katika mazingira ya nimeona changamoto nyingi sana ambao watu wa Busia wamepitia hasa wakina mama wale wazee watoto wasichana ambao hawamalizi shule kwa muda na kwa jumla uh, viwango vya umaskini katika uh, jamii yetu ya watu wa Busia ni vikubwa mno kwa sababu karibu asilimia sabini uh, watu hao wanaishi uh, chini ya kuweza kujikakamua kuweza kuangalia vile wanavyoweza kujimudu katika maisha. Yeah. Kwa hivyo mimi kama mmoja wa hawa jamii ya watu wa Busia changamoto mm -hmm. hizo kwa sababu nimeingiliana nime sana na masuala ya wakina mama mm -hmm. nimekuwa nikifanya miradi ambayo inahusisha wakina mama hata kuinua maisha yao kwa sababu uh, mimi kazi yangu ambayo nilijifunza ilikuwa ni kazi ya ualimu lakini miaka iliyopata karibu mitano nimekuwa nikitangamana na wakina mama kwenye vijiji kufahamu tu hasa ni kwa nini watu wakusia hatuwezi pengine watoto wetu kukaa kwa mashule kusoma na hizo transition from uh, secondary to university pia hatuna watu wengi sana ambao wanaenda katika vyuo vikuu nataka kuelewa sana hasa a uh, zile changamoto ambazo zinatukinga sisi kama jamii. Na, na, na. Uh, kwa sababu hiyo na. hata mimi ni mmoja wa wale nimekuwa katika na miradi ya wakina mama hata kuwapatia hamasa ya kuweza kutengeneza kama vidogo vidogo na hata sako za wakina mama ambazo zinaweza kupata mateni ya kuwasaidia kuinua haki zao za maisha. Na, na, na hata mimi na uh, moto yangu ya kampeni inaitwa uchumi mashinani. Mhm. Mm Ninajua kwamba wakina mama wa Busia wana uwezo mkuu sana wa kuweza kuchangia katika uchumi wa nchi. Na mheshimiwa wacha wacha wacha, wacha nikukate kidogo. Um, umesema ume, umekuwa katika miradi mingi tu ambayo umeweka wanawake mbele. Je, unadhani kwamba yule ambaye yuko katika wadfa huo kwa sasa ambaye si mwingine bali ni Florence Mutua amefeli wapi eh, katika uh, majukumu yake kama kama mwakilishi wa wanawake katika kaunti hiyo ya Busia ndipo sasa wewe unataka kumngatua? Hello. Madam Pauline. 
nadhani tumempoteza madam Poli lakini hata hivyo uh, shukrani sana ameweza kuzungumza kauli kuzungumzia kauli yake na jinsi ambavyo wangependa kuona uh, county ya Busia ina imarika na kufanya uh, mawili matatu kuhusiana na kiuchumi na kudhibiti akina mama na pia kuweza kuona kwamba um, uh, uh, wa, 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 wananchi wa Busia wanaweza kusonga mbele kimaendeleo wakati tunampata Paulin uh, Kundradi um, wakati tunampata tena Paulin Morin Nagila tutakuwa tunasema naye mengi sana kuhusiana na yale ambayo yanahusiana na county ya Busia lakini kwa sasa mtakupatia wewe pia fursa mtazamaji na mpenzi msikilizaji kupitia 0700700 1766 au 0732475111 lakini kwa sasa tuende kwenye mapumziko mafupi sana ndio mapumziko mafupi sana kwenye mitandao ya kijamii Facebook na Twitter at KBC Channel 1 at Marto Bahati at Aile Moka na hashtag yetu ni The Frontline KBC usiende mbali Very good evening to you, Reva. Welcome back to the program uh, Frontline uh, 2017. And uh, we are talking about Busia County in studio. With us is uh, the incumbent women representative, uh, that is uh, Florence Mutua. Uh, we also have uh, Isabella uh, with us, who is uh, vying for that particular position. And uh, that's Isabella Masinde on a Jubilee party ticket. And uh, of course, Isaac Lemoka was talking to um, Nagila, that is uh, Pauline Nagila, who is uh, vying for that particular position as well. And uh, that was via phone. I want to believe we, um, uh, Isaac Lemoka, we just want to talk to her once again uh, so that she finishes the narrative that she was advancing. I'm on Twitter, and uh, <laughs> a number of people seem to appreciate women, by the way, this evening. Uh, there is one that says, uh, calls himself, let me see where this is. Um, this Ernest War uh, Wariko says, Kamo uh, Singh Teso, that's where you are, you, you are, you are tweeting from. Jamu Mshimiwa Mutua ako na mpango gani kwa vijana wa Busia tuna imani kwake that is a question mm -hmm. uh, coming to you so the question of youth uh, especially mm -hmm. in Busia mm -hmm. uh, seems to be uh, key um, there is another one that I saw that I need to go through uh, this is um uh, Lovian Nashipai it's encouraging to see women stand and go for their rights and uh, represent their fellow women so mm -hmm. you're being appreciated for uh, standing up among other things and um, what you, you, you articulating the issue of uh, a school dropout especially mm -hmm. among girls mm -hmm. and and just from listening to Pauline uh, speak there mm -hmm. that seems to be also her concern yeah it's a big concern actually in Busia County because if in one year we can have 10,000 girls drop out of school because of uh, early pregnancies, it should worry any community. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I was saying, that is one of the key projects that I, I started in, the, um, in uh, 2013 on a slow note because we didn't have funding. But I, I was very happy when the funding came and then we were now able to do public participation for people to know that now we have little funding that has come in and now we can be able to take actually the girls back to school. Mm -hmm. Because we either had to take them back to school or take them to polytechnics or empower them economically. But many of them wanted to go back to school actually to show that they actually dropped because of uh, just the pregnancy. So most of them came back uh, and by March 2016, uh, we had already started having a, a large number of girls coming in. 2016, we have managed to take... Uh, 19, 98 girls back to school. To, uh, 2017 January, we have increased the number because now we were more prepared and we got 241. So in total, we have almost 350 girls who have gone back to school. And that is my joy. And that is one of the reasons where I'm telling my Busia County people, these girls, if Isabella comes in, I'm not saying that is what she'll do. She might not find that maybe her, her, her key priority or any, any other candidate. But for me, that's a priority. I need to see these girls to finish school, and I need to see them up to university. And as I continue until 2022, I will have absorbed a big number. But in the meantime, as we continue talking to uh, taking these girls back to school, that is not the only thing that I'm doing. We are also mentoring them in schools. Mm -hmm. 
to tell them that you are not supposed to, to be in love with this. You are supposed to be in love with books. So we are doing also mentorship and we have been able to reach at least so far 3,000 students and I'm happy that we are making progress. And in those mentorships, we also give girls sanitary pads and we also give them uh, the boys uh, uh, something to use that they normally choose either boxers or vests so that they can feel also appreciated. Mm -hmm. And in those forums, we also talk about gender-based violence. We talk about uh, um, sex because parents have stopped talking about sex to their children. And we also talk about issues of reproductive health and more so hygiene for girls. And so it is a very good, um, we have a very uh, set agenda for those forums for mentorship. Well, so uh, one of the key projects, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Just, the just first continue. priority for me was the girls, the dropouts. And I'm happy that it has already taken a life of its own. People just come automatically and they're enrolled. And it is like a scholarship, though we normally pay for them the whole fee for the whole year. And then now we have the polytechnic ones who do not want to go back to school. And then the issue of uh, now economically empowering their parents. Now that is the second project, the third project that for me is key. Because if we don't economically empower the parents, it, it, they will not be able to uh, help us keep the other children in school because you, can know, you know some of them also drop out of school because of poverty. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing um, the dropouts. We are doing mentoring the girls and the boys, and then we are also economically empowering the women through groups, which I'll talk uh, no, further as, as, yes, as, as, we continue. as we continue. Yes. Before I ask uh, Isabella this question, how much is the affirmative action, uh, the, 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 the fund? The fund, we got uh, seven million the first time, and then of course they deducted the money for the, the two vehicles that we normally use in the county. Mm -hmm. Because you know, before we even got the, the, the two vehicles, we used to come with a vehicle that is in Bunge, we go to the, with it to, the, to, to the county, so it was just total madness. So we really appreciate that the national government felt it is good for them to tap into our funding to buy us those vehicles. Mm -hmm. They have really helped us. Well said. Yeah. Isabella, uh, listening to uh, Florence, she seems to have articulated all the issues that uh, uh, people of Busia may want to address. So what difference are you going to offer if elected on August 8th? You know, this issue of... Uh, girls dropping out of school, I think uh, Mwishmiwa said it's not really because of poverty. But I think poverty is a, a great contributor to this problem. Because what is it that motivates the girls to go out there to, you know, because Busia has the highest rate, I think, in mm -hmm. Western mm -hmm. province. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially Budalangi, mm -hmm. I think, has been singled out and you see, you find in Budalangi, that's where we have the, the lake. Probably they are dealing with those fishermen who offer them maybe fish for sex. Mm -hmm. we, we have to start teaching these children about ethics, how to, to look after themselves, how to, to, to be economically empowered, you know, by helping their parents. Uh, probably if it's uh, a small scale businesses, how they could be engaged without soliciting for money from uh, fishermen. Uh, sorry, fishermen, uh, you may not be the only ones. There are many, many uh, things that go on uh, around that particular issue with the girls. Because you find even it's either from their peers or from the teachers. I mean, we, we need to really understand why are these girls and why all this, uh, the high rate of uh, pregnancy amongst our girls in Busia? Yes, they go back to school. Uh, they leave the children at home. Their parents are not economically empowered. It's important that uh, they get empowered through capacity building, through providing capability, you know, funding, so that they can actually engage in uh, some businesses. So the question will be, I want to mm. talk about funding and engaging in businesses and that's what uh, mm -hmm. Florence seems to be saying she's doing. Mm -hmm. How different are you going to tackle if you are, in, in other words, how different is your manifesto uh, from Florence? You know, uh, Florence has tried her best uh, for the time that she has been there, but when I've gone around Busia, I've had a lot of complaints from people, the youth, the women, they have not seen her in their areas. She has not been able to reach out. Probably her strategy was uh, a bit different, or maybe it was biased. She focused too much on some areas and not others. Um, 
if the funding is available, I think it's important to have uh, a committee, maybe at sub county level, that would look at the priorities for each sub county and then uh, address them accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question of uh, business, because we're talking about women, especially <laughs> empowering them, doing business and all those kind of things. In fact, uh, that those who say that uh, uh, for those uh, business community, those who cross over to Uganda, for example, face a lot of harassment, mm -hmm. uh, even the environment perhaps is not extremely conducive. Uh, has that gotten your <coughs> attention in terms of uh, addressing some of those issues? Yes, it has. And they actu there's actually a women group called uh, Border Women Group. And we just funded them. We actually gave them uh, money just the other day because we want to make their work easier, even if they're crossing over to Uganda to bring whatever it is they're bringing here. But let me uh, just tackle an issue that has been raised by uh, Honorable Isabella on the issue of uh, the funding. Uh, you know, and I'm happy Isabella is here. I've had all manner of issues in the county. And it is good we are on uh, live national TV. Yes. Because... Um, when somebody go, calls media to tell them uh, Mama Florence uh, maybe is an outsider or Mama Florence is uh, taking all the money to Kambani because there is a press conference that Isabella who is sitting here called and actually said that I'm building a gorofa at Ukambani. So I would be very happy if the auditors were taken to that place by the people who uh, talk about these things eh? <laughs> so that the auditors can know truly that the money has gone to another county. So it is good us as leaders. When you talk something, have facts. And then another thing about the, the funding, the funding is divided equally. Each constituency gets its own funding. And then we have a committee that is set by the national board that sits and looks at the proposals that come from each constituency. And then they, they are brought to Nairobi and they are approved by the national government. We have a national board that looks at the proposals. So these proposals, are brought back to the focal points per constituency. I have seven focal points. Mm -hmm. Those focal points get their proposals, are told this is what has been approved for Samia, this is what has been approved for Teso, this is what has been approved for everywhere. So uh, each constituency is moving according to how the focal point is moving fast to ensure that the people in that area are uh, public, uh, they, they, they have public participation. So we are also going and uh, meeting, I've met so many women, and I can assure you so far, I have uh, uh, supported over 300 groups. And 300 groups, if you count uh, each group having 30 women, those are very many women okay. in a very short time since we got the funding uh, from uh, 2016. You did indicate that there's a group that received funding the other day. Yes. W w w how, what is the modality of reaching uh, to, a person? if there are a number of groups, perhaps, uh -huh. how yes. do you settle on one? What is the strategy that you use or modality so that you... Uh, you That's uh, a you very good question, and it is very good for clarity. Mm -hmm. When a group, the, the groups that have heard about the public participation, they are told on the number of the, they are told on the items that are available in the office. Like this is the program that we have, maybe we, we want to economically empower women. And then they are told on the various economic ways that they can be supported. Mm -hmm. They come to the office, they agree with the coordinator that this is the way they want to, 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 do, to go. Most of the women in the county felt that they wanted uh, these tents and the chairs so that they can quickly bring in money when they rent them out. So those groups, when they bring those uh, requests, that is the committee in the county that sits with the seven focal points. The commissioner is part of the, 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 um, the, um, the, the, the committee and the gender officer. They look at those proposals and they tell the women this is okay and they bring them to Nairobi. So it is the women actually who decide on what they want. Okay. They are not pushed by anybody to, to, to write a particular proposal because they are the ones who know where they come from. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who know their environment. So they are the ones who apply for what they want. Mm -hmm. So once the proposal comes, it's brought to Nairobi and it is approved. If it is not approved, if it is declined, the group is normally informed because sometimes they don't attach the, right, the necessary documents and it is declined on various technicalities, mm -hmm. but the group is normally informed. So um, I normally get very surprised, and I have to say this on national TV, because when people go out there and start saying that I have mismanaged the fund, I am not anywhere near that fund. The coordinator and the DA and the national board and the committee at the county are the ones who do the intricacies of, the, of what the women want. I only come out the last minute when I'm, I'm doing what? Handing in a check or I'm taking the tent or I'm taking the chair. But I also advise 
that I have been to a particular area and those women need this sort of a support. So I'm a patron. I am not anywhere near that funding. So it is important that the nine women representatives who want this seat understand if at all they come in, that is the same job that they'll be doing. So it is important to understand how the fund is being run. Isabella, I'll be giving you a right of reply so that uh, mm -hmm. because you seem to be accused of uh, her, mm -hmm. you know, injecting some propaganda, yes. talk mm -hmm. about Gorofas mm -hmm. yeah, outside yeah. the county, saying mm -hmm. that she's an outsider, among other things. I'll give you a right of reply so that we talk about those issues. Isaac Lemo can have a umempata Pauline Nagila, but number in Billy, uh, Nigapenda Sana, uh, to Patesimu, uh, to Pate Kauliza, was killed as a way to Susan Kutoka Sims, Abusia, and Asimaja Kusena and the Halu. So that, so that uh, Sante Sana Muzangu, uh, uh, Muzangu Martin Mwanje kwa hilo. Na jinsi ya pupo ulivosema Nikolai Pauline Maureen Nagila ambaye kwa kika um, anazumuza na sisi moja kumoja kupitia njia ya simu. Mwishimi wa Pauline kama unanisikiliza koho wa anisikie. Hello. Sante Sana. Samahani tulikatika kidogo uh, lakini umesikiliza jinsi ambavyo wenzako wamezungumza wamezungumza masuala mengi sana kuhusiana uh, na masuala ya ya, ya ya fedha masuala jinsi ambavyo wanaweza ku uh, wana, wanaweza kukabiliana na, 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 na mambo ya mimba za mapema na mambo kama hayo uh, umekukifuatilia mdahalo huu kwa kwa, kwa 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 karibu sana utasema nini Mheshimiwa una, una, una mkashifu sana uh, una mkashifu sana B Florence kwa sababu hajaweza kufanikisha na, na kuweza kutumia fedha hizi vizuri sio na, na kama na kama ni wewe unge, ungefanya vipi Thank you. 
wakaingika kutoka katika kikapu cha CDF ni wanafunzi wangapi wamefaidika katika kikapu cha MCA ni wanafunzi wangapi wamefaidika katika kitengo cha elimu kwa sababu kuna pia zile pesa zinatoka katika serikali na kabla hatujaanza kugawa hizi pesa ile kamali tayari imekasimini kujua hawa wamepata pengine 1000 na kuzi zilikuwa kiasi fulani kwa sababu unapata pengine wanafunzi wanatoa hata 2000 na hivi hivi mheshimiwa unadhani kwamba senti hizo zinaweza kuwasaidia wanafunzi kwa, kwa haraka haraka zinaweza kuwasaidia takriban wanafunzi wangapi Ninataka kutaenda mfano kwa haraka haraka ni kwamba tumeona pia kaunti zingine kama za karibu kwa mfano kama Bungoma Naam hizo senti zilipeana zililipwa wanafunzi kuanzia hizo senti Okay. Asante sana mheshimiwa. Ah muda wetu umetupa kisogo sana. Ah lakini ma, 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 mawazo yako ya mwisho kabisa kabla ya ku, kukukata kwenye simu. Mimi nasema hivi nikipata hii nafasi tunataka tuangalie pakuu masuala ya kwa mama unajua katika kaunti ya Busia. Naam. Tuna masuala ya kwa mama ile afya ya kizazi. Mhm na wa mama wengi wamepoteza maisha wanapojifungua hasa kwa mfano wa hospitali kama OSEO. Naam. Mimi kama mama ambaye nasimamia kitengo cha wakina mama, sio sio kuzipekee yake wengine wamepoteza maisha kwa kuu. Okay. Nataka pia tuangazie hayo masuala. Vijana wa Busia bodaboda iliambia Busia kisikoria. Mhm. Ni vipi ambapo tunaenda kusaidia hawa vijana kubadilisha hiyo biashara ya bodaboda ili wao pia na nafasi ya kuweza pia kushiriki katika hizi Asante sana mheshimiwa. Naomba kukukata. Asante sana. Huyu ni mheshimiwa Paulin Morin Nagila. Asante sana kwa kauli yako na umesikiliza uh, mheshimiwa ndani ya studio mmesikiliza jinsi ambavyo mheshimiwa Paulin Morin Nagila amezungumza, amekuuliza wewe Florence uh, B Florence Kuradi kwa ni civic education ilifanywa namna gani? Pesa ngapi ambazo ulizipokea na masuala kama hayo na kukashifu kabisa kuhusiana na fedha hizo. Tumepata maswali mawili matatu kuhusiana na kaunti ya Busia hususan yaliyobuliwa hapo na mpinzani wa Florence uh, katika kaunti ya Busia anaitwa Pauline Nagila uh, na tutakuwa tunajibiwa uh, uh, mheshimiwa hadi <coughs> studio ni kwa sasa na ambao kwamba tutakuwa mapumziko ya haraka sana uh, kisha baadaye tuendelee na mazungumzo the program uh, the frontline 2017 we are talking about busia county and uh, a lot of reactions are coming in of course uh, before we took that break um, isaac lemoka had just spoken to one of uh, the contestants there unfortunately the uh, weekly from test so we could not get that sound clearly uh, but hopefully before we finish the show we are likely to just link up with lemoka so that we have to listen to what he had to say but before I give Florence, who uh, a number of issues raised by Pauline, and I want, I'll give you an opportunity to respond mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. uh, and in Kiswahili if possible, because she was speaking mm -hmm. Kiswahili. Okay. Okay. But uh, um, Isabella, if you can just respond to accusations that uh, a lot of propaganda uh, <laughs> at the county level saying that perhaps she's not a resident of Busia. You know, that is very strange to hear it from Mwishimu Florence, because I have never said that Florence is not a resident of Busia. Florence is married in Busia in uh, Butla, sub-county, mm -hmm. to one very powerful man there. And therefore, she rightly belongs to Busia. I personally, I cannot say that because I am married into Busia, just like her. So I can, I, how would I start saying that Florence is an outsider? So I was born in uh, Vihiga County. But what I've always told the Busia people is, <coughs> because they have uh, problems with this issue of uh, people who are born and bred in Busia, 
the women who are married in any place have more rights mm -hmm. than even the children mm -hmm. they give birth mm -hmm. to in that place because those children mm -hmm. may mm -hmm. decide to move elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I have told them, especially the young people, you know, they're mm. the ones who are really hot on this issue of, mm. oh, we want our own. I mean, Busia is made of uh, many, many communities. Mm. In fact, if you were to say that if you are not born in Busia, take your children and go. I think uh, three quarters of Busia will leave. Go. Because yeah. we have a lot of intermarriage from mm. Uganda. Mm. We have a lot of people who have come from other places. We have a lot of oh, communities man. that have settled in, uh, in Busia. Yeah. So this uh, propaganda of ODM, you know, ODM have a very high level of propaganda. And they make things look real. Now, so, just like what I've had now. So, I so, have, <laughs> so because I would, like to, I would like to know which media house I talked to and said Flo has built a, a Gorofa or what. Because I don't say such things. I don't talk about things I have not seen. So you never called for a press conference? No, pre a press conference I've, I've had. I've talked to Just so many media people, you know. But I have not said that Florence is an outsider. I think that would be laughable because I would be told, hey, where were you? Mm -hmm. eh? Because they, they know that and mm -hmm. everybody knows and I'm not ashamed. Mm -hmm. And I've told them, if you are to uh, start attacking women who came from other places, then let's start with the mother of Amos Wako because oh. she comes from my place and let her take her children, wake her up from the grave, a baby at Otuake end. So we won't even have a senator in that case, you <laughs> see. So I, I'm, I'm not for that kind of uh, uh, silly politics of saying that, oh, because Mutu ni Kabila, I don't even know what tribe. I, I may not be the tribe I think I am. Yeah? So <coughs> us in Busia, I think we need to impress everybody. Mm. I come from Matayo's mm. sub-county and within the township, we have all sorts of people. We have Wanubi, we have Ugandans, we have Rwandese, we have, and they have all mixed. Mm. My own son is married to an Ethiopian. I mean, so, so th th she doesn't have a right to vie for a position? Mm -hmm. well, well, well said. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I go to Florence, I just want to ask you, and, and, and I know Florence is the current woman representative uh, in Busia County, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Isabella is uh, an, uh, an environmental expert. Uh, I know you've worked, be it in National Environment Authority, you've been to South Africa, you've worked across the globe. Uh, what have you done in your personal capacity? Perhaps just trying to initiate some of these projects. Uh, so much that you, somebody can say that you can inspire confidence that uh, if, you, you, if, if you're given the, uh, the higher office, then you're going to be even exemplary in terms of performance. Okay, on the education front, I've supported uh, people who can attest to that. Quite a number of families have benefited from my own personal initiative, just paying their school fees and uh, taking them to college. Some are working, some are doing businesses. I was also part of the team that started the Magnet School, which was actually meant to help the, the less privileged people in the society. It's a very nice school in Nambale. And every year we usually have uh, um, some ceremony to, uh, to celebrate uh, the achievements of that particular school. We start recently I helped them to start a public library which is supposed to serve the entire community <coughs> in that place. And then I've supported the <laughs> groups to start small projects. They are people who harvest sand, who have requested for, for boats, have been able to contribute to that. Uh, there are people who uh, trade in fish, uh, the Omena Beach people, uh, small tools that they require to enable them to do. And, and uh, this, this across Busia County, mm -hmm. some selected areas, because one of the accusations you seem to have with the Florence is she has not reached some parts of Busia. Yeah, well, she's the women rep, so she should have reached uh, everywhere. Me, I'm still uh, trying. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when I become the women mm -hmm. rep, I will, I, I have to have a strategic plan that uh, represents every sub county. Okay. Yeah. Florence, let's mm -hmm. now go back to the questions that uh, uh, Pauline raised. Mm -hmm. Na naomba tuzungumza kulugi ya Kiswahili sababu alizungumza lugha ya Kiswahili watu wa Busia waelewe. Mm. Ana tashushi kusiana na ile hazina ya kina mm -hmm. mama. Mm -hmm. Mosi kwamba hujafanya hujawahamasisha uh, wakazi wa Busia. Mm -hmm. uh, anauliza ni pesa ngapi ambazo ulipata na ulitumia mm -hmm. namna gani? Wanafunzi ni 81 na anausema kwamba ulilipia uh, karo na ulitumia mbinu gani uh, miongoni mwa masuala mengine kama unaweza na, na imani kwamba ulikuwa unamsikiliza uh, kama unaweza kwanza ya. nataka kushukuru mheshimiwa Isabella Masinde <coughs> for clarifying that issue because uh, somebody sent me the clip which i have but i don't want to dwell on those issues 
she has said ha kusema so hiyo tunawachana nayo sisi kama watu wazima mm -hmm. uh, and i appreciate that she has said that e, nataka kuzungumzia e, pia jambo lingine mimi leo hapa niko hapa capacity ya women representative busia county mm -hmm. and i don't think my party has got any issue to do with any of the discussions that we are having here mm -hmm. so i really appreciate mambo ya odm isikuje kwa hii uh, mjadala i respect and i love my party eh na kuhusu kuongea mambo ya hiyo mheshimiwa Polina Meraise um i think information you hawana because the first thing tulifanya hata the board is aware ilikuwa ni civic education kila constituency tuliita wa mama na vijana na watu wetu wa uwezo and our our watu wetu wa youth fund we had a very big meeting in every constituency that is hapo ndio tulianzia mambo ya capacity ya yeah, awareness tukafanya capacity building and most of the watu wale walikuja ku participate walipata certificates they can even show you that tulikuwa capacity building ya mama florence ya kutueleza mambo ya hiyo fund that was the first project that we did kwa busia county kuambi kueleza watu hiyo pesa itafanya kitu gani na tukahusisha watu wa uwezo because is a national government fund na watu wetu wa youth fund wote walikuwa na sisi kwa hiyo mkutano so she can even confirm na watu wa wake wa budalangi kama walikuwa kwa hiyo mkutano yetu ya capacity building mm -hmm. secondly itakuwa ni muhimu sana pia kama anataka kupata information akuje tu kwa ofisi my offices are open hakuna uh, mtu anakatazwa chochote mm -hmm. ukuje pale uulize budalangi sisi tulipata pesa ngapi na watoto wangapi wamesomeshwa because kila constituency iko na focal point focal point ndio wakae na Pauline amueleze because as far as i know so far we have paid for 2700 students bursary apart from the 350 walewa Uh, the special uh, group mm -hmm. i love talking about the 350 because those are special children mm -hmm. see wacha hao wengine wa form 1 mpaka uh, university but kuna hao pia wale wanaanza form 1 mpaka university kuna wale vile nimezungumzia wale wanafanya polytechnic wale hawawezi kuenda wapi kurudi shuleni especially kama wamezaa ama kama wamaliza form 4 na hawana pahali pa kuenda mm -hmm. kuna wengi tumepeleka polytechnic she can even go to all the polytechnics and ask kuna list ya mama ya affirmative fund ile imesaidia watoto wengi wa polytechnics people living with disability kuna shule ambayo iko teson north we have supported watoto kwa hiyo shule kusoma ni ya shule ya wale mavu and apart from that school tumesaidia watu wale mavu wengi from the office uh, wale wanafanya nini wanasoma kwa hivyo information ndio mheshimiwa Pauline Hana na mkaribisha kwa ofisi ndio sasa sasa ndio kutafuta kura aambie watu facts because um, hii mambo ya kwenda kuongea when you do not have facts as a leader it really gives you a very bad name mm -hmm. kwa hivyo um, ingine ya mwisho nataka kusema ya kwamba naomba sisi kama wamama tutafute kura zetu na amani tutafuta kura zetu na heshima mm -hmm. kwa sababu when the men are fighting they expect us the, the women ndio sisi tulete amani kwa hivyo wamama wakipigana na wanaume pia wanapigana county yetu haitakuwa na amani. Kwa hivyo unasema Pauline hana habari. Je, uh, kabla sijaenda kwa Isaac Lemoka, uh, mm -hmm. Isabella una habari kuhusiana na anachokisema mheshimiwa? Well, sisi bila tumejua kila sub county ilipata 7 million. Mm -hmm. Kulingana na ile pesa ya affirmative action. Lakini sasa mpaka sasa tujajua ni pesa ngapi ilikuja Busia ku, kwa hiyo fund ya affirmative kwa hivyo swala ni eh, ni pesa so, ngapi ilikuja na iligawa namna gani kwa hizi sub county so mheshimiwa na mm -hmm. swala ambalo Pauline pia alijaribu kuibua uh -huh. ni pesa ngapi zili pesa ilipo, ilikuja hiyo 7 million na ikikuja wanatoanga 5% ya oversight ya monitoring ile inabaki Nairobi 2% inaenda kwa admin kulipa staff so the money that was there ile tunaweza sema tulishika na, na committee ili, iligawa kwa uh, various committees is 4.5 million per constituency so i hope that has clarified uh, for on, the entire period no the 4.5 came in the 2015 2016 year hii okay. mwaka wametupatia at least uh, 6 million but they are releasing it in tranches mm -hmm. na sijui kama sasa vile tunaenda kukura kama wata release the final tranche so we are waiting to see how much they are going to give us mm -hmm. but i invite all the candidates who are vying in this women representative seat wakuje wakae na coordinator wangu that way they will be able to articulate issues zile wanaelewa vile wana wanaendelea kutafuta kura kwa hivyo hizo milioni sita wanazitoa kwa wangu yes. kwa hivyo awamu pa sub county pa sub county, pa sub county yes mm -hmm. yeah bila shaka na imani kwamba mm -hmm. umeelewa mm -hmm. maswala haya wanayosema as we 
bring this uh, program to an end, mm -hmm. uh, the people of Busia. Number one, I need to confirm one or two mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. uh, Isabella, if you lose come August to Florence or Pauline or whoever candidate you attend, are you ready to concede defeat? Mm -hmm. If you lose oh, <laughs> on August day? You see, if you lose fairly, then you concede. But if you lose knowing that somebody has done something to make you lose, then why would you concede? But it's IBC conducting the poll. <laughs> we expect yeah, that, polls. That's, well, we hope they'll be fair. They'll do their work properly. Uh, of course, there must be a machine and there must be a loser. Mm -hmm. And in this case, there'll be one winner mm -hmm. and nine losers. Of course. Mm -hmm. so and the winner is me. <laughs> so, yeah. so if the process is credible, you will accept the results. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yeah, b uh, by the way, it will be very credible. I am winning this uh, election. The, uh, on, on Jubilee Party. Yep. Of course, Moshmua Florence, you are ready to accept the outcome if you lose to any of the nine candidates. Apparently, I'm not losing. Eh? I'm going to win this one. But uh, what I want to uh, assure Isabella and all the other Kenyans there is that us, from where we sit, we request IEBC to do their job. Because if they do their job, uh, everybody will be happy. Even Isabella has said she will ac uh, accept uh, the results. Mm. But if IBC does not do their job, mm. her being even in Jubilee, she is saying that she will refuse the, the results. Mm. So IBC needs to do their job. What we need right now is not this issue of people going around camouflaging that they are looking for peace. We have peace. What we need is IBC to do their job. And their job is to ensure that we have a credible election. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well said. In 10 seconds, your message to the people of Busia. In 10 seconds, let me give you that opportunity on KBC Channel 1 and Radio Taifa as it were. Well, what wa Busia to Natarajia to Takua na Uchaguzi, Ambao ni wa Amani, na Pia Mutachagua Viongozi, Ambao wata waletea mabadiliko, watafanya maendeleo kulingana na vile inatakikana. Mm -hmm. Sio watu wakuenda tu kulala kwa bunge <laughs> na kupiga kelele huko. Hey, Tunataka maendeleo busia. Asante. Mwishimu wa mutua? Mm. Uh, yangu kwanza ni kushukuru watu wa busia county kwa sababu wamenipatia ushindi mara tatu na najua watanipatia ushindi tarehe nane. Mm -hmm. Na hii nomination tulipita hawa watu walinipigia kura kuonyesha kweli wanafurahia ile kazi nimewafanyia. Sisi bado tuko kazini tunaendelea kufanya kazi ya affirmative mpaka tarehe saba kwa sababu eh, ofisi haijafungwa. Kwa hivyo naomba wa mama na vijana waendelee kuja kwa ofisi kwa sababu programs za youth ziko nyingi hata siku kukuzia hiyo but we have youth programs lakini eh, nataka kushukuru watu wabusia kwa kusimama na mimi na najua tarehe tisa Florence Mutua ndiye atakuwa declared mshindi wa women representative Busia County. Asante, asante sana Florence Mutua mwakilishi wa wanawake katika kaunti ya Busia na asante sana Isabella um, kwa kupata nafasi ya kuwa nasi hii leo unawania kwa chama cha Jubilee. Tunawatakia kila la heri uh, tarehe nane, baada ya tarehe nane tutawaita tungene mje <laughs> mnaweza salimiana eh? Yes. Ishara kwamba mtakubali kwa tuko sawa. Mko sawa. Hey. Mko pamoja. Si tuko pamoja. Tuko pamoja. <laughs> and so that much, that's <laughs> we bring this to an end. Uh, she seems to deny a work of promoja. We bring this to an end on behalf of the entire production and technical crew that made this a success and on behalf of uh, Isaac Lemoka, who is uh, on KBC uh, Radio Taifa. My name is Martin Wanja. Thank you for getting time to be with us. Let's do this again uh, next Friday. But uh, um, on Sunday, Kathleen Cheng and Bodhi Masambi will be here to do exactly the same. Bye-bye for now.